<laughs> Hello, people of God. It's Pastor Stephen, and I'm joined with six other people today with Jackie and Carrie, Colleen, my sister, Shannon, Judy, and Linda for our Bible study today of Matthew 2, 1 through 12. This is the passage where we learn about the wise men coming to visit Jesus. And I'm asking Linda to give our opening prayer today. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending us your precious Son and giving us the gift of eternal life. May we spend this time and energy focusing on what we learn through our study of your word. Give us in our thought, guide us in our thoughts, and, and give us wisdom to choose our own words carefully so that they reflect our love of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So a little bit about where we are with lectionary and with the scripture readings and everything. We are in the season of Christmas time, the 12 days of Christmas. And so this coming Sunday will be the second Sunday in Christmas. But I'm going to jump ahead liturgically and lectionary wise to Epiphany. And the story of the wise men is actually outside of Christmas. It's the first one after it in Epiphany. And I, I know I talked with Martha and she asked what the Sunday was because she realized she had Christmas Eve up on those, those boards and she likes that to be correct. And she felt bad about that. I said, oh, it's the second Sunday of Christmas. I forgot I was actually going to preach from Epiphany. And in fact, our, the, our prayers that we use in communion will be epiphany themed so i'm going to go over and change those again to epiphany and uh, uh so epiphany we think of it though as part of the christmas story and two of our gospels tell about the baby jesus and what would those two be matthew and luke. Luke. matthew and luke in fact in the song that i wrote that i shared with jenna i say that we're singing the story we've heard and we've shared so many times from Matthew and Luke, not Matthew, Mark and Luke, just Matthew and Luke. Mark starts out his gospel with Jesus full grown, going to be baptized by John. And then the gospel of John is the one that says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and coming into the world and da, 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 all that stuff. And the word became flesh. And in my mind, that's the Christmas passage, word became flesh but it's not talking about wise men or angels or shepherds. And as we saw last Sunday from Galatians, even the Apostle Paul says, well, at the right time, according to the law, man born of woman, um, Jesus came. So in a way, he's telling about what Christmas is about and the purpose, which was so that we could be adopted. But, um, but of course, he's not talking about wise men and shepherds and all that kind of stuff. So it's Matthew, though, that we get the epiphany story that we're about to hear now. So uh, anyone have anything else to say about it before we just launch into it in chapter two? So Jackie, would you start us out in chapter two, verse one? After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. We'll stop right there because there's quite a bit right there. And we all feel like we know the Christmas story and it's pretty easy to, to have some of the details wrong. And why would that be? Why, why do we not know some of the details? Because we've picked them up from movies and television <laughs> specials and pictures and Christmas cards and not necessarily straight from scripture. Um, and so that was kind of cute when we had the kids being asked questions. They knew Bethlehem. They knew Mary and Joseph. They got a lot of it right. And so I was, I was impressed. That means our Sunday school teachers have been doing a good job. Um, but we always throw in the wise men. And I think you all know that wasn't the same night when Jesus was born. But a lot of people, because we tell the stories together, they just imagine. In fact, because we have nativity sets, where you put your wise men with the shepherds. Oh, they were all there the same night. Oh, they weren't. So, so that's not a good place for us to get our information. Um, but so, what are some of the details that we're picking up just in those first two verses? That 
Herod was king. <laughs> yes, and that's a very typical thing to set the time by who, by what was going on politically. It'd be like us saying, you know, during uh, Trump's uh, term or Obama's term or whatever, um, we're more specific, we would give years, but that was an important way in the, in the ancient past to share time. Thank you, that's good. The wise men came from the east. Yes, and that was one of the questions for the kids. I was amazed. They said south, they said north, they said <laughs> west. And I don't think any of them thought east. Oh, well, but <laughs> yes, so we do know they're from the east. Does that tell us anything about them? Doesn't say how far east were they Chinese? <laughs> they could have been, I guess. Um, we think probably they were from Iraq or Iran or um, places like Persia at, at that time. <laughs> but we don't know for sure. Welcome back, Harry. We lost you for a second. Yeah, I had to make sure I went over and silenced my phone. Uh, so from the east, that's very, very generic. How many of them? Three. Don't know. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't say yet, so <laughs> we don't know. So. Uh, where they usually are depicted as three, but it doesn't say that. Uh, anything? They call the star his star. Followed his star. We've had a lot of uh, attention on on uh, Jupiter and Saturn coming together a few days ago, um, and some people have wondered if that's what it is. And I'm not troubled that well. That's not technically a star in their minds. That's up in the sky and it's bright that counts as a star. That, so it could have been something like that. We don't know for sure. That's just speculation. But it's, They say his star. What, yes. Where did they come up with that? I'd like to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't say that either, why they call it his star. But they see it and they just assume. So um, how would they even know to be looking for something or that you know, they hear that a king is going to be born. How would they know any of that stuff? Would they have been familiar with the Old Testament? How would, yeah, they could have been. So how would they have known about some of the prophecies? They would have had to learn from someone who was knowledgeable of those texts. Yeah. And then through those, I mean, it, you can go into a real deep study. Um, it didn't talk directly about a star, but uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah, there was foretellings of the Messiah coming. And in Daniel, Daniel is one of the ones where they get into a big study of timing and then putting together with the, the suggested that the Magi were possibly astrologers. If they knew the stars, they could track from that. And with the timing through Daniel and other scripture texts, because they really focused in on that. We, we don't today, I don't. Um, but they could probably put that together with knowing that there's going to be something happening in the skies because the heavens are what they watched. And uh, uh, of course, when that star, they knew there would be a star coming. Well, let me ask another question. Is there any evidence that Daniel ever talked to people in the East? I, I can't answer that for certain. I, I would say absolutely yes, because mm -hmm. he was in Babylon. And yes. he was brought there to be and, part of the intelligence uh, society. And uh, we know some yeah, things yeah. are talked about. But, so well, yeah. one, of the foot, one of the footnotes for the verses one and two said that is a possibility from Parthia near Babylon that they came from. So yes, that's where they would have come so into contact that, with the text. That was five or 600 years before this, that Daniel had been taken captive into Babylon and they, they were very interested in gathering all the information and history and uh, speculation about the future they could. So they had some of that stuff and maybe that's how they were putting it together. And it's possible God, you know, um, God reveals to us in his word and I love that, but could be, and God reveals to people in nature and just in what can be observed. And it could be that God revealed some things somehow to these people, whether it was passed on as history or from, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you can figure out just by looking at stars, but um, they, it's not even really questioned. Oh, we saw a star, so we came. <laughs> being, being God's plan 
he's laid out different things here and there that are embedded in the text and uh, that we may never know about until the day. Um, but yes, it's all God's plan. So he's made it aware through people to carry forth with what they're supposed to do. We're talking about fullness of time, aren't we? This is just amazing. Okay, so mm -hmm. calmly, uh, anything more about the first two verses? <clears throat> and welcome, Jackie. We see your, <laughs> your frozen pose with your pinky. Can you hear us? Can you talk to us? Yeah, I think I can talk to you. I'm not sure. I'm yeah, driving. Yeah, I, I had to go to the pharmacy. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Glad you're here. So, Colleen, in the next couple of verses. Oh, I was just going to say the very end of two says, and they've come to worship him. That's their purpose. Yes, purpose is exactly. worship. How good. interesting. Yes. Good, good observation. Good. So, let's go on. Okay. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. We'll stop right there. I just noticed that all the people are troubled with him. Why would that be? Well, that would uh, uh, be an impact on his ruling over the land. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's making a big deal about it, and that's getting yeah. everybody else squirming about it. Yeah. Yeah, they, but he was disturbed, and like Colleen mentioned at the end of two, the the uh, magi were coming to worship. So there's two different trains of thought. They want to come to worship him. Um, Herod doesn't want to go to worship him. He's disturbed by it because he he knows something about it too. And as you just said, Shannon, he's a th uh, could be a threat to what what they have and i'm thinking if and we all know there are people that are not so happy about some of the presidents we've had or happy about them or whatever but when there is going to be a change or if people are getting wind that herod is upset they're probably thinking what is he going to do and what's going to happen and so even if whether they liked him or didn't i'm guessing other people are a little bit worried about the instability that that would would cause um you know anytime there's i'm sorry anytime there's change though you have an upheaval of emotions yeah mm -hmm. on all fronts so it's a troubling time and so we kind of think of it as just him but it, apparently you know everybody is affected by that they don't know does that mean taxes will go up or down or the military will will be heavier on us who knows so there's well, a little worry as we learned too, he said the weight of the government will be on his shoulders. Um, so he's upsetting status quo uh, financially. A whole lot of people that realize that this change coming will upset what they live for. So it's the it's the rejection, not the worship. It's that we're we're already seeing the two choices that he will he brings he will bring. You know, when you're king at that time, you expect to be king the rest of your life. I mean, here someone else is on the scene. Yeah. No. <laughs> not a good feeling. Right. <laughs> I have a question. All these people, would it, they would not have been all aware that he was in the past, right? Of the prophecies and the star and things like that. Is that what you're talking about? No, all the people under Herod that had concerns. I didn't hear all of your question. They're concerned why when all the what where we mentioned that the other people, the other some of the Jews weren't were concerned as well about Jesus being born. So I don't know if they know all about Jesus being born or if it's just there is rumble and rumor that the king is not happy. I don't know. We don't know how much they know, but they're says they're they're upset too but they are but they are aware that a messiah is coming right or we don't know it says when herod the king heard this he was troubled and all jerusalem with all jerusalem not all of israel just jerusalem the city so um i don't know how much they we don't know how much they knew because it's um, interesting that the wise men are going to worship him how how did they know who he was 
So that's where we're thinking they came from uh, Babylon, Persia maybe. and Babylon. And so maybe, we, we don't know exactly how, but that it was not a secret that someday a Messiah would come and that there were prophecies about him. So they're, somehow they've extrapolated or speculated and they, oh, that's a star, let's go. <laughs> well, in in uh, the study Bible too, look in your new study Bible and yeah. at the footnotes here there for verse three, there's a long one. I won't read the whole, whole uh, thing, but mm -hmm. I love the study Bible for just yes. uh, the details. Um, uh, I'll just go like halfway down. The text tells us that not only was Herod disturbed, but so was everyone in Jerusalem. When Jesus was born into the world, people immediately began to react. His presence did not soothe. And this, this is a key thing. Immediately people react. When people come and learn about Jesus, they either accept him and come to worship him, or they're on a rejection side and wanting to move away because he's a threat. So the choice we're already seeing. Um, his presence did not soothe and comfort most people. Instead, it startled and disturbed them. In some, he awakened oh. spiritual longings and others fear and insecurity. Things have not changed that much. Jesus still disturbs people. If it is true that God entered our world when Jesus was born, we dare not sit idly by ignoring and rationalizing our inaction. We must acknowledge Jesus as the rightful king of our lives. There's a whole other first half of that note that I won't You know what? You kind of answered what I was trying to get at. He awakened spiritual longing. Why yes. the Magi were going to worship him when others weren't, you know, some people were really ready for him. Yeah. Okay. And the, the scripture is God's word and they were already into the word. So they were already accepting what they were reading, uh, believing already. So that's why it says they came to worship okay. and Herod didn't want to. He just wanted to learn about it. We get a picture of the kind of phenomenon later on, that just two weeks ago, we saw when John the Baptist comes on the scene and people are saying, oh, are you the Messiah? Nope, I'm not Messiah. Oh, are, are you Elijah? No, nope. are you the prophet? And I was a little surprised at that. And yeah. sure enough, back in uh, some of the books of Moses, he says someone else is gonna come as a prophet. So. There, I think there's a buzz about, but they're not sure. And, oh, I heard about a Messiah. Oh, really? Or I heard someone was supposed to be born, supposed to be the king. I'm guessing it's that kind of a gossipy thing where nobody knows for sure and everybody's asking, everybody's upset or uptight or, or hopeful or worried. But it, all that's going on. All right, Shannon, would you take verse five and six? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Thank you. Now, that verse six, uh, is, is it indented for everyone in the Bibles that you have? Yeah. And it's indented because it's pretty, well, he says, and so this was said by the prophet, and then you have words that, you know, are from the Old Testament. Um, can anyone tell me what, what prophet that was? Um, Micah? Didn't it say Micah? What was that, Linda? Micah? Micah. Yeah, Micah. That's what it said, the indent says. Mm-hmm. Did I say it wrong, or is it not him? I don't. I don't have it. It in says it in the study Bible okay. really clearly. The prophecy from Micah had been given seven centuries earlier. Micah five two. Okay, I couldn't see the small print, so, so I, I didn't answer Linda because I wasn't sure, but that sounded right. Yes. Yeah, so, so Micah had said this about. It said seven centuries before. Yes, that's that's when uh, Micah was was writing, and uh, in fact, one of the, the little songs I did that was a uh, with Martha that I recorded was "Little Bethlehem of Judah," and it's based on this verse that just oh yeah, you're just a little little town, but uh, you know something important will come from you. What do we know about Bethlehem outside of this? 
That's where Joseph came from. Yes, and who? It, why did he have to go back to there for the census? Isn't it neutral there? Isn't it sort of like Sweden is, or they didn't? I, they were were they running from like the census? They or is that running after? from the census. They had to go back to the towns where their their ancestors came from, which tells us about Joseph that not only was he originally from there, even though now he's living in Nazareth, but he has ancestors there. And in fact, we're not looking at the passages that say it, but do you know what ancestor was from there? David. David. And so we have that whole story of when Samuel the prophet goes there, and I'll be preaching about Samuel as a boy in a couple of weeks. So I was just going over some stuff. Um, so he is told while, man, what was the king's, the first king before David? Saul. 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 Yeah. While Saul is king, uh, Samuel is sent to Bethlehem and, and God says, you're going to find the next king there. And, and he's kind of thinking, what's the big deal about Bethlehem? And it's kind of feeling like, oh, I don't, it's going to be this one. Remember that story where uh, Jesse lines up all his sons and and one David by one, different. nope, not him, not him, not him. Oh, is there one more? Oh, well, there's little David, we'll call him. And he comes in, and of course, he's from Bethlehem. Um, there is another story before that, besides David coming from Bethlehem. Does anyone remember who else comes from there? Ruth and Naomi are from there. So the story of Ruth is set in Bethlehem. And um, so this is where I get to show off my, my Hebrew. Beth means house. And so anything that starts with Beth means house, which is interesting. Now, if we call someone Beth, <laughs> we're calling them house. But Beth house. is usually from Elizabeth, uh, which means from the house. And um, Lechem is the Hebrew word for bread. So literally, Beth Lechem means house of bread, so which was a place where they grew lots of wheat. And we know from the story of Ruth that uh, gleaning and the wheat and the harvesting the wheat was all important things. So it's a, it's a town that comes up a lot in the Old Testament, and it's not too big. I don't know that it was neutral like Sweden, Jackie, but it was, it's about four, five, six, seven miles away from Jerusalem. So it's in the shadow of Beth, of Jerusalem. And when big things are going on in the city, Bethlehem is sort of like the, it's like the Amityville to Reading. Uh, so uh, not big, it's not such a big deal. Yeah. Uh, but there was a prophecy from Micah that something will, um, you're not going to be forgotten, Bethlehem. And from you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And that makes perfect sense uh, seven centuries before that, because it was only a little while after David had come from there who had been a shepherd. Is that possible that um, the Magi, I, I heard this when I was driving, but the Magi, we weren't sure how they knew to go and follow the star. Is it possible that they followed the, the prophecy or the prophet? Sort of like um, like the Jewish people who are still looking for their Messiah. They follow the prophets and then realize that this star is the sign that we've been waiting for and then went? I think that's possible. It's just not spelled out in detail. So we don't know exactly. The best we can do is kind of make educated guesses. Okay. Yeah. That, that was where it said in Daniel. There was a lot of timing that they learned through Daniel. And of course, they witnessed things through Daniel to realize of the signs that were there and they could piece the timing together with what they knew about stars and watch for a sign and realize that that's got to be it that's hmm. what the daniel study helps with well we have we're six out of 12 verses and we've spent 30 out of 40 minutes so <laughs> we're going to move on i'm going to ask judy to read verse seven and eight then herod called the magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. 
Oh. And, and we know he is up to no good. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the wise men secretly, mm -hmm. oh no, Herod secretly summoned them. And so that means they have not found Jesus yet. And so he, I'd always thought, well, they stop in, well, let's check with the king and see what he says. But it was actually the king called them in secretly because he knew they were out there. And I, I just saw a picture. I was looking for a picture to use on the cover of our video of the virtual service Sunday. And I send them to Joe and then he puts them on as kind of covers. And uh, one of them showed these wise men on donkeys and they had kind of like chic kind of clothing. And they had this whole caravan of other camels and other servants coming up behind them. We don't know if it was just a few or if there was a whole caravan uh, following them, lugging all the things they needed to, to set up camp every night. Um, but it's possible. And certainly, uh, if you're the king and you hear that there's a big caravan from another country coming through, um, they get the word to you and you want to go and, and deal with it. But we don't know. We don't know if that's exactly what's going on. Uh, and we know that he's up to no good when he said, oh, go search and let him know, because I really want to worship him too. <laughs> what a liar. We can see right through that. Anything else about those verses before we move on? Linda, would you pick it up at 9 and 10? After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. I love that part. They, our mind says, rejoice exceedingly with great joy. And we, we've heard different versions of that. Um, yeah, it's a joyful story for them. Because they've been looking for a long time and been reading and preparing and traveling. And yeah, they finally got word. You got to go, Colleen. Thanks. It's good to have you with us. She had already told us she'd have to leave early. Anything more about those couple of verses? Well, that, it says that the star stopped over Bethlehem, and that proves that it was a supernatural star because only God can stop the stars. Otherwise, they keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, 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 so even the idea of planets coming together, was it some kind of weird thing? I mean, God has the power to do anything like that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he made the stars, he put them where they are, and he named them. So, yeah, he can do anything that he wants. <laughs> Absolutely. Kara, would you read a verse 11? 11. On coming, <clears throat> on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold. Stop right there. We'll start right, stop there. So Jackie still has one verse to read. No, so, well, that, um, was, that was, I was still finishing 11. Oh, sorry. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you. Okay. Um, I had a footnote there and I thought that was the next verse. Number. I need to put on my reading glasses when I'm reading this Bible. Okay. I apologize, Carrie. For That's that. fine. So uh, anything, well, yeah, I'll, I want to jump in first. <laughs> that, um, yeah, when they went into the house. What? We never yeah. heard about yeah, the house. Yeah, how? What? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, it's, he's, oh. it's been two years, and my note said that Mary and Joseph are married now and have a house and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but it was in Bethlehem. So they were not originally from Bethlehem. So were they temporarily staying there? Did they get more work there? So in 2000, I got to go to Israel with a travel group. And, and we talked about uh, there was in Sepphoris, which is near Nazareth, there was a big build being done at that time. And it's possible that Joseph was getting construction work doing that kind of stuff there. And of course, the, the word we use for carpenter, uh, or we translate carpenter, really meant builder. And it's much more likely he was a stonemason, 
which was what you had to build with in that time. Um, but, you know, if he was a builder, he'd go where there was work and maybe there was some more work to do in Bethlehem for a while if he's staying in the house. Or maybe he caught up with some of his family that, uh, or older family that he could stay with, but it doesn't say, so we don't know. All right, and something every kid struggles to try to remember, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And lots has been said about each of those. Anyone from their Sunday school lessons want to share about frankincense or myrrh? I thought uh, they were used for burials or something, perfumes and... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got it was. What? You got a footnote there, Linda, in your new Bible for yes, 2.11? Let's hear it. <laughs> Share the second one. Um, 2.11. Gold was a gift for royalty. Frankincense was a gift for deity. And myrrh was a spice used to anoint a body for burial. I think the interesting thing is these gifts may have provided the financial resources for the trip to Egypt and back. Very likely, yes, yes. And we have to remember all this is God's plan. So God's in it all the way. He's not here and there. He's, he's constantly there. So the fact that they're in Bethlehem is God's plan, whatever the reason they were there physically, it's, it's, God's there and spiritually keeping them there and providing god provides that's a great perspective on it yeah oh what are we gonna well, what do we have that we can bring them <laughs> you have that murder <laughs> someone gave you last christmas why don't you repackage that of course they didn't have christmas before they that, probably but. had those gifts wrapped way before waiting for the time yes yeah and possibly that which one was the one for burial Mer, uh the uh, mm. mer. The mer. It could have been that they held that and that was what was used when Jesus was buried. I, I don't know. He didn't really need it though, did he? Because he was going to be resurrected. Well, so. What did you say that the, you said deity was deity, gold was the riches, incense was deity, and myrrh? Gold was the spice, frankincense was deity, and myrrh was a spice to anoint for burial. Yeah, that's a pretty weird baby, it's gift, like, right? It's like a triune. It's like the birth is the gold. The frankincense is his um, yeah. his his um, uh, teachings, and then we know that he's going to die for our sins. And the myrrh is an indicator that he's going to die. Or okay. I'm really reading into that too much. <laughs> no, no, it's a uh, the way I'm seeing it too. It's like. The this is a, a short a short version of the full story. Every story has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. So in a short, he's royalty. And uh, yeah, as it was said, said yeah. Um, Can you imagine going to a baby shower and bringing a burial shroud? Wouldn't that mm. be weird? But... Yeah. And so maybe, it, I don't know if that was a normal thing or if it was as weird as it seems to me to do something like that. But yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot of meaning behind those gifts. By the way, the reason we often depict three wise men, so many of our depictions are because artists had conventions for how to show things. Like they would use blue often for Mary and, um, and they would use the halo thing like, oh, that's how you know they're part of the, that they're holy or that they're part of the divine family. And um, if you're going to bring, if you're going to depict wise men bringing three gifts, you don't have four of them and two of them are both bringing myrrh. I mean, you have three wise men, but, but that reminds us, it never says there were three, so there could have been more or less. And, uh, well, at least two, but could have been 14 wise men and together well we pitched in and all together we got the frankincense i don't know well there was a i want to just backtrack a little bit to a note in verse with verse one and two uh we expect god to come looking for us to explain himself prove who he is and give us gifts but those who are wise still seek and worship jesus today not for what they can get but for who he is 
that's been the footnote with two, one, and two. Amen. Amen. We might only have a minute left. So, Jackie, would you read the last verse? Sure. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And that's where I'm getting my sermon title from, that they go back a different way. Um, and again, uh, this reminds me, God is providing, even providing for them to go back and not give that report to, to Herod. I'm sure he's hopping, hopping mad because of it, but uh, yeah, and it's in a dream. And we have lots of dreams in the Christmas story, um, mostly foretelling what's going to happen. And, and that's a warning dream. And then David's going to, uh, David, um, Joseph will be warned in a dream to go to Egypt. And yeah, lots of God speaking in dreams. Shannon, remember I was waking up this morning and I had really weird dreams. And I, I was, every, it was like everything was a maze and everything. I, every time I thought I figured something else, then it would change. But I don't think that was God teaching me anything. I think I was just, I had too, too much pie before that. <laughs> All right. Uh, who would like to give a closing that, prayer? That, that, that fi everybody has a study Bible. Read that final study note for 212. It kind Thank of you. sums up everything we talked about. Thank you, Carrie. And I'm pushing it because I, I, I know. I expect That's they're going to click us off any second. But Jackie, how about a closing prayer? Oh, no, you gave the opening, didn't you? Shannon, you haven't done one. No, Linda did the opening prayer. Oh, that's right. Okay. Shannon, I still want you to do the closing. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> Heavenly Father, first, thank you for bringing us together in this yes. virtual Bible study. Second, thank you for even though we're going through this COVID, it somehow is still keeping us united through virtual, through prayer, through study, whatever. Um, God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the word that you provide to us. Um, and we thank you for this amazing church family we have. We pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen.